bless that wonderful name of Jesus. We'd like to pause here for a word of prayer. Eternal God, our maker, our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider. Father, we thank you for blessing us with this time, with this moment. You've allowed us once again to enter your place of worship that we could call out unto your most powerful name. And God, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you that we're still blood, still flowing warm in our veins. And Father, even now, this day also is the day that thou has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad therein. Amen. And Father, we know that we don't have to tell you about anything that's going on because you already told us about it in your word. And Father, we just thank you that we've been allowed this opportunity that we could stand before you, recognize that you're still almighty God, that you're still the creator, that you're still the maker of all that is. And Father, that nothing that is going on has diminished your strength, your power, your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, your kindness, your love, your peace, your comfort. Father, we thank you that you are still all of that and more. And we bless your name, Father, in spite of what man has done. We thank you for being who you are. We thank you for giving us a mind to recognize that you are the almighty, that you are the alpha, that you are the omega, that you're the beginning, you're the ending. Father, you're still the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Father, we thank you for being a blessing to us. And Father, we just ask that as we go forth and we recognize the challenges that are before us, Father, we ask that you would intercede. Be the father in our households. Father, be the mother that you've always been. Father, bring peace and comfort. And Father, give direction to those where confusion may be lying at the tre threshold. Father, we ask that you intervene. And then we know that you're not the author of confusion. So therefore, we ask, Father, that you bring peace, bring contentment, bring love, bring fellowship. Father, even in the midst of all that's going on, you still reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. And we ask, Father, that you let us recognize your spirit and then let it abide, rest, and rule in each and every one of us. We pray for all of those under the sound of our voice. Father, we pray for those that uh, are in homes and, and that need uh, the comfort and the care. And we just ask you keep our minds fixed on the fact that you said, cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. And Father, we'll be ever so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory that is due unto thee. And we ask it all in the name of Christ, and for his sake we ask it. Amen. Amen. This next song says, Lord, you are good. It says, you've been better than good. It says, Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. It says, I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. It says, I can't praise you enough, even if I tried. And for a few moments, wherever you're tuning in from, whether you're at home, whether you're in a group we love, if you would lift this with us all over the room this morning, it's a real simple song that we'll use to give thanks to the Lord right here. It says, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I tried, cause you've been so good to me. Let's lift that together. It says, Lord, you are good. 
You've been so good. It says, Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. It says, I can't praise you enough. No matter where you're tuning in from, I owe you my life. It says, I can't praise you enough. Even if I try. It says that you've been so good to me. Let's do that again. We'll say, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Say, Lord, you are good. It says you've been better. Say, I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I had all day, I couldn't do it. Because you've been so good to me. We'll do that one more time all over the room. Say, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. It says, Lord, you are good. You've been better than good to us. Say, you know, can't thank you enough, can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Say, even if I try. Because you've been so good. We'll stay right there. You've been so good. Yeah, let's stay right there. You've been so good. Stay right there. You've been so good. Yeah, one more time. You've been so good to me. And I will go to the next part. It's my favorite. It says, there's so many doors you've opened. There's so many ways you've made. There's so many times you healed me. Yeah, God, you're better than good to me. There's so many doors he's opening. There's so many ways you're making. There's so many times you've healed me. Yeah, yeah. You've been better than good to me. Say so many doors. Say so many ways you've made. Say so many times you've healed me. Say you're better than good to me. Has he opened and doors for you? Is he making a way for you? Has he healed your body? Yeah. You're better than good to me. One more time. There's so many doors he's opening. There's so many ways you're making. There's so many times you're healing. You're better than good to me. One more time. Has he opened door for you? <laughs> Has he made a way for you? Yeah. Has he healed your body? Yeah. You're better than good to me. Say you're better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good. You're better than good. Yeah. He's better than good. Yeah. You're better than good, yeah. You're better than good. One more time. Say, you're better than good to me. You're better than good to me. You're better than good to me. Yes. And we'll say that you've been, say, so good. We can lift that together. You've been. Say so good. You're better than good to me. You've been. Say so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. One last time. Say you've been so good to me. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think it's in order to give God praise wherever you are. I think it is in order to give God praise wherever you are. Give God praise. I don't know where you are. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I just think it is in order to give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. We bless God for who God is. We want to go before God in prayer. Uh, we want to pray for the church at large in such an unprecedented time. God, we thank you for your presence. God, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your parishioners. And God, we thank you for your participants in the building of the kingdom of God. God, we pray right now that someone who is watching God, they will be affected by the gospel. God, we pray that someone who is watching, something is said that would change their direction. The seasoned saints would have said it like this. They said, what must I do to be saved? In the mighty name of Jesus, let the words of my heart, the meditation, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight my strength, our strength, my Redeemer, our Redeemer, may we all say amen wherever you are. Amen, amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, we want to just dive into the Word of God. We want to dive into the Word of God, and if you would, I would love for you to go with me to uh, the hymnal of the Bible, if we can go to the hymnal of the Bible, we will look in Psalm 46, Psalm 46, and we will read that chapter. We will read that chapter, Psalm 46, Psalm 46. And if you are at home, amen, if you are in your lounge wear, if you are Netflix and chilling, uh, what we, the least we ask that you do is stand for the word of God. Amen. We are thankful for you and we pray uh, for you during this time. I know I said Netflix and chill, but perhaps you're quarantined and chill. Uh, but we want to read uh, these few verses. It says it like this. God is our refuge and strength, an ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth may give away or the earth may move. The, the mountains will fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam. The mountains may shake with sh surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God, and I will be exalted among nations, and I will be exalted in the earth. And the last thing he sings is that the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Brothers and sisters, just for a little while, I want to preach from this theme, don't be shook when everything else is shaking. Don't 
be shook when everything else is shaking. Brothers and sisters, in light of this recent health crisis, the COVID-19, which is infamously known as the novel coronavirus, it has flustered society as we know it. Everyone is up in arms. Everyone is frantic, agitated, uneasy, uneasy, edgy, and apprehensive because the truth of the matter is that no one knows where it came from, how to contain it, or with the lack of testing, whether or not they have it, which in turn causes people to panic at the thought of pandemic. And I mean, it's frightening how social distancing went from being a new phrase to becoming a new normal. Schools are closed, restaurants are padlocked, conferences have been canceled, sports activities and arenas are empty, church buildings are abandoned. But the blessing about that is, brothers and sisters, is that while churches, uh, the buildings are abandoned, the churches are still open. And I mean, brothers and sisters, I believe that it is safe to say that our world has been shook down and shook up, and many of us, although we profess to be believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the truth be told, we are frightened, fearful, and frozen by the frenzy that is unfolding all around us. Nevertheless, the songwriter in this insightful, inspirational, and soul-stirring psalm suggests to us as pleasant parishioners and partners of PG today that although the world has gone topsy-turvy, although the world perhaps looks like it is upside down in a state of catastrophe, although the world looks like it is in calamity and confusion, although the world is shaking, you don't have to be shook. I wish I had just one person in their virtual couch just to give God some praise. Although, brothers and sisters, the world is shaking, you don't have to be shook. The sentiment of this song is saying, as believers, you can stand in the steadfast security and stability of God, knowing that God is our refuge. You can stand in the steadfast and st stability of God, knowing that God is our refuge. Even in the midst of crisis, understand and know that Christ is. I, I want to say that one more time because there's somebody missing their shout. Understand even in the midst of this crisis, you got to understand that Christ is. Somebody may be saying, well, what do you mean Christ is? Christ is still a bridge over troubled waters. Christ still is bread in a starving land. I don't care if we're in crisis. We've got to understand that Christ is still a lawyer in a courtroom, a doctor in a sick room. We've got to understand that even in the midst of crisis, Christ still is. And I want you to know that one Christ is better than having a hundred rolls of cotton ale. Because having one Christ gives you victory over a million crises. I, I wish I had just one praying saint in the virtual world. Brothers and sisters, one Christ is better 
than having a whole lot of crises because the Lord will see you through whatever your crises is. I think Jay-Z said it like this. He says, we have 99 problems, but I want to uh, lecturize it today and say, although you may have 99 problems, don't let this crisis be one because God is our refuge. And what I want you to know is that Christ shows up in the middle of crisis. That's the thing that Christ does. He shows up in the middle of crises. And what happens when Jesus shows up, brothers and sisters, he, blind, he, he dries up blinded eyes. He, brothers, and sisters, he opens blinded eyes. And brothers and sisters, he dries those blinded eyes that were, were blinded by tears. When Jesus shows up, midnight is turned into midday. When Jesus shows up, enemies are subdued. When Jesus shows up, brothers and sisters, he fills the mills of barrels, the barrels of meal. When Jesus shows up, brothers and sisters, oil is increased in your queue. You in your queue. When Jesus shows up, manna falls from heaven. When Jesus shows up, the night of failure is replaced by success. When Jesus shows up, he turns your crisis into an opportunity to praise God. Brothers and sisters, We've got to know and understand that God is the God even of us over crisis. We pay attention, and I'm getting excited by myself today, and I understand as we pay attention to this particular praise passage, we understand that this was a hymn that was written by an ancient church emerging out of a true and real circumstances. These folks were experiencing trial situations. These people were experiencing things that they had not experienced before. But brothers and sisters, what the text suggests is that even though they endured them, they, brothers and sisters, were able to get through them. And as they endured, what the text suggests is that they sang through it. They sang through it, and I want to pause parenthetically just to recommend and remind us today that it is important to keep a song on your mind and keep a hymn on your heart because hymns are a powerful preparation for prayer. Dr. Melva Wilson Coston uh, the former professor of worship and music at the Interdenominational Theological Center says it like this, singing lifts us closer to God and we bear so that we be able to bear the condition uh, of our situation. In other words, brothers and sisters, uh, a song will help you get through what you're going through. Music helps us to express the inexpressible. Therefore, recognizing this fact, this past parishioner wrote this praise song to articulate his testimony, and his testimony was that even though I got shook up, God didn't allow me to be shake, shaken down. What a wonderful testimony in a world of acrimony that God continues to keep us when it is hard for us to keep up. How does it that God keeps us when we can't keep ourselves? Brothers and sisters, it's in the text. First of all, what he sings and what he says, he says that God uh, is our refuge. And in understanding that God is our refuge, the psalmist suggests, therefore, you don't have to fear. If you know that God is your refuge, if, if you know that the Lord will keep you when you can't keep yourself, you should not have to fear. Brothers and sisters, although we're going through the COVID-19 crisis, coronavirus scare, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that you reside in God and you don't 
have to fear because fear does something to the believer. Fear can slow down or even paralyze necessary functions that we need to survive. That's why Paul was encouraging his protege, Timothy, in 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Come on, saints, I know you remember that when he said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but God has given us power, and God has given us love, and God has given us a sound mind. When God was talking to his children, brothers and sisters, God always reminded God's children not to fear. If you all don't believe me, let's walk through the Bible. You all remember uh, when he was talking to his child Isaiah, he said, fear not, for I am with you, and you should not be afraid or be not dismayed because I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. You all remember when he was talking to Jeremiah? He said, fear not. You all, come on, let's fast forward because I know I don't have much time to keep you in the virtual world. You all remember, brothers and sisters, when he was talking to to the Virgin Mary, he said, fear not, for I am God. Brothers and sisters, one of the things that I want to share with you as a believer in Christ Jesus, you ought not fear. The earth is being moved in this song. The earth is being moved. The mountains, as the songwriter says, is being carried away. The waters are roaring. In other words, everywhere he looked, for stability, it was unstable. The mountains were shaken. But brothers and sisters, what blesses me about the text is that even though everything else around you is shaking, we can be stable in the fact that God cares for God's children. There's some frightening things going on around us. There are things that's going on that are real. There are things that are going, that is going on that is rumored. There's real virus and rumored shutdown. There are real wars and rumors of bloodshed, and all of which contribute to despair, increased health anxiety, decreased job security, feelings of hopelessness, tension of tribulation, fear, for loved ones' lives, all while practicing social distancing, loneliness, and unstableness. Nevertheless, the psalmist made the reasoned estimation that God was greater than even everything that we face. God was greater than shaking of the mountains. God is greater than the shuttering stock markets. God is greater than the violence that is happening on the streets. God is greater. And to fear these disasters, this bad news, gives in to mass hysteria. And in some way, if we give in to fear, brothers and sisters, what I want you to understand that in some ways it cheapens and minimizes God's honor and it robs us of our assurance of his sovereignty. But I just stopped through here today to tell you that even in the midst of social distancing, God is not distant. The text says with us that even though we are practicing social distancing. God is not distant. The text says that he's a very present help in the time of trouble. Even though the congregation is displaced, understand the church is unmoved. Since God is in the midst of her, God will help her and it says right early, brothers and sisters, we got to understand that God is our refuge. We've got to understand also 
that as we reflect and recite on the song, not only is God our refuge, we've got to understand this pericope in context. God is our resource. You look at the text, it says that uh, in the, there is a river. There is a river. And brothers and sisters, we all understand that in uh, geographical history, most cities uh, that became uh, 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 cities that were productive, they sat on a river because the river brought them resources. And I don't want to go too deep into a geographical lesson, but brothers and sisters, Jesus also said that he will give us, if you believe in Jesus, God will make uh, a river of water flow up from your belly. I wish I had some wisdom witnesses in our virtual world to understand that God is not only refuge, God is a resource. God not only is refuge, God not only is resource, but he uh, watches us and he appears in right timing. He appears in right timing. Brothers and sisters, I, I pray that you read this passage uh, in the privacy of your own prayer ground. But there's one piece that says that he came right early. Sometimes God may not come when you desire him to come. But one of the things that I suggest is that God is always on time. And sometimes he waits until we give up. Sometimes God waits until we have no other resource but to call upon the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes God waits perhaps to the stroke of midnight, brothers and sisters, until we call. And with knowing this, I'm done. We've got to understand that as we recite this hymn, God is our refuge. God is our resource. God waits to the right time. And then knowing this, we can relax. We can relax. I'm done. Uh, you can finish heating up your pizza or your chicken wings. You can enjoy your Netflix and chilling. You can enjoy your, the rest of your day. But I just wanted to drop a word in your spirit. And in knowing that, brothers and sisters, I just want to open up the virtual doors of the church. We all know that in the 21st century, uh, the website is the new uh, front door of the church. So if you need Christ, if you desire Christ to come into your life, uh, you can come in uh, on our Facebook Live. Uh, you can come in on our YouTube Live. Uh, you can come in uh, or send us a text or a post uh, in Instagram. Uh, because in times like these, you need a Savior. And as you think about uh, your eternality, we want our praise team, our praising parishioners, our praising parishioners uh, to sing to you while you think about your salvation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is my God is. 
never to leave me. God he never he ever comes short of his word. God not to pass and break, stay in the narrow way. God I'll keep my life clean every day. God I'm going to go with him when he comes back. Let's give God praise wherever we are. Wherever you are, you ought to open your mouth and tell God, thank yeah, you thank for you being Lord. God. And thank you for allowing us another opportunity Amen. at life. Yes. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> we have just about finished with worship. However, we want to solicit your prayers and help you also to understand uh, that worship is not done until we worship through giving. We want you to worship through giving, and that is one of our pillars of vision, is that we get to a place that we are resolute givers. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that we are rev resolute givers. We have to understand that stewardship is more than an obligation. It is an opportunity to witness the reckless nature of God who gives the gift of salvation by grace to all who will receive it. Resolute giving tempered by generosity is the fullest expression of the life of a steward. Amen. One who has been given a gift that must be used with the purpose of giving 
to God. Yeah, Brothers man. and sisters, uh, so therefore, we want to challenge you not to forget to give. You can do that, brothers and sisters, uh, online uh, at www.pgmbcstl.org, uh, or you can send a check or a money order uh, to 1220 G.H. Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. God bless your hearts. God Amen. bless your hearts. Amen. Amen. At this time, we also want to recognize all of you who have logged in uh, and perhaps are guests of Pleasant Green. We thank you. We thank you. You could have logged in on any other website. There are so many different opportunities for worship uh, on today. So we welcome you. We bless God for you. Um, we are a church who is striving to be pleasantly purposeful for all people. With that being said, we want to welcome them pleasant green style by saying together, you are welcome. welcome. Amen, amen. amen. We, we're thankful for you, we're thankful for you. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I've gotten just what I came to get from Amen. the Lord. Amen. I've gotten what I've come to get from the Lord, and I pray that you in virtual world, wherever you might be, uh, I pray that something was said uh, that will give you encouragement for your journey. Uh, we want to push forward, brothers and sisters, and remember those who have been sick and shut in. We want to remember our first responders. We want to remember those pleasant parishioners who are not able to be here. We want to remember those who are seasoned in years and those uh, who are young. God, we want to remember those who have fragile immune systems. We want to lift them up in prayer. Yeah. And as we lift them up in prayer, brothers and sisters, we'll say our benediction. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for our presence, for your presence and your power. We thank you for these pleasant parishioners who have come to praise you, God, and, and to give of themselves so that the church might go forward. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask that uh, this ministry continues to be fruitful. God, we pray that you keep the first responders in the city, God. Thank Amen. you for the police officers and the firefighters and the EMT workers, God. We thank you for them. God, we thank yes. you for the doctors and the yes. nurses, God. We ask that you pour out your presence in the hospitals. And God, we ask that you pour out your presence uh, where people need you, God. And God, we pray that Pleasant Green be a church that is a church that engages community, God, and that we'll be a beacon of light for somebody to come saying, what must I do to be saved? Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. May we all say amen. Amen. As Amen. You go, tell the world. As you go, tell the world. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them about. Yeah.